What's up, Dolph fam? I'm on the spin bike right now in my garage. It's a rainy day, which I always feel like is the best time to be on here. You're not too excited about getting out there anyway, so it just feels like you can enjoy it that much more. I got the Tour de France replay highlights from last year, trainer road right there. And you can see I have a tripod and it's been a really good setup just running it on my phone, uh, being able to look at it and then having my computer in front of me for entertainment, you know? Over here I have some paper towels from a snot. I have some chargeable stuff, extra bottles, my gingerbread men were there, more food. And then you can see under here, we got underneath is where my fan is. And I don't have it on right now because it's so cold in my garage, but it's giving me a good sweat, which feels good. As a matter of fact, I've been on this thing for two hours. I've already done this twice. Yeah, I have people all the time freak out about how much I sweat on this thing and how bad it is for the bike. And it is true, but this is like my dedicated trainer bike that's been hand me down from two different people and it's never going back on the road. So if this slowly rots for the next 10 years, I'm cool with it. Now, starting the day here, I'm heading into work. We just talked about on the podcast that like how to, like all these recovery strategies that you can implement that are realistic. You know, when you're trying to be the fittest athlete possible, the healthiest human, but you also have your family and your job and all these obligations that, you know, don't allow you to just recover like an athlete. Even when you are training, either just like one or pretty dang near close. And so what I wanted to do is kind of take you through my day as I go to the studio, sit at a desk, and kind of have a normal day with my family, show you what I do, like all the little tricks that I use for recovery throughout the day. And I think it'd be pretty dang helpful, um, especially when we do some foam rolling later, which I'm already looking forward to because two hours of endurance, it just makes you start to feel kind of, you know, it feels good, but you get a little stiff. Just like that, two hours on the trainer is done. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is just hit two stretches to make sure that my problem areas, AKA IT bands, hips, don't get super tight as I, you know, start to get ready for the day over the next 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put the camera down and I'll show you what those stretches are. First things first, I'm just gonna touch my toes. So kind of relax my knees. I like to try and externally rotate my feet a little bit, create a little torque in my hips, and that way I know everything's just gonna be lined up all the way to the floor. So a little torque in the hips, and then just drop down, hang out for a second, just let my body hang, and then I start to spin a little to the side. I can already tell the right IT band is a little tight. So rotating to this side is gonna allow me to single out that outer hamstring, which a lot of times is a muscle that compensates and gets extra tight when you have IT band syndrome going on. One of my favorite ways to stretch this too is if I really want to hit, it's your, the short head of your biceps femoris right here. You cross your legs. If I want to hit that right side, and I'm going to turn toward the instep of my right foot. Now it's behind my front foot, but as I reach and turn, you're really gonna feel that thing light up. You can even kind of push your hip out this way and keep my foot planted, sink down. I prefer to have like a foam roller to really relax into it right here. I guess I can hold my frame a little, stabilize. That actually helps. So come up. I'm just gonna hit the other side. Not quite as long. What's nice too is this one also gets your back. Even if you do a variation on this on the floor, it really hits your, it's called your quadratus lumborum, this deep muscle in your low back. And that's a real game changer if you are experiencing back pain on the bike. 
The next stretch I will do is to now hit the outer front side. So again, this is kind of all targeting everything on the outside for me because it's kind of a problem area. And this is me basically just staying proactive make sure I don't have any bad flare-ups again. But your TFL right here, this kind of soft part of your hip is where your IT band actually connects. And you want to be able to stretch that. You want to stretch your outer quad, which could have been a little overused if you have a harder time turning these on, which with IT band syndrome is a thing. So for me, I'm going to grab my toe with my opposite hand. So instead of just stretching my quad and my hip, which is still great and like that feels incredible, grabbing it with my opposite hand allows me to pull my leg up and actually pull it back, I guess in the opposite direction. Wow, my freaking uh, washing machine just turned on. But it allows you to get torque on it and pull it back this, this direction opposed to just back which is going to hit that outside of your leg. <laughs> Sorry, that's so loud. <laughs> Here's what it looks like. I'm using my seat to stabilize here because the goal of a, a static stretch is to lengthen the tissue and you have to relax your body. If you're too focused on stabilizing your own body, it might defeat the purpose. So don't feel like you're not cool because you hang on to something. It could literally be making the stretch more effective. That's just the truth. So you hold on here. Oh yeah. Oh, this side is so much tighter. I just pop my knee. So I'm actually gonna rotate my upper body away from it, and I'm gonna pull my leg back and up. And I'm just getting everything on the outside right here. Now, ooh, okay, I lied. I gotta get one more chest stretch. Open up the chest and shoulders. Interlace the fingers. Reach down, chest up. Oh. Reach toward the floor, squeeze your palms together. I apologize for anyone that's watching this on their home TV, their family around, because I look like a psycho, but you doing this opens up your chest and your shoulders and you're gonna even feel it through the front of your neck. Incredible, maybe even your hips. Now, that alone is going to make my body just feel more relaxed because it's gonna be in more of alignment. Those things that start, we're starting to feel tight on the trainer don't anymore. And now my next 20 minutes, I'm just gonna be able to relax my body more, AKA start the recovery process. I debated going into nutrition on this video because it's such an important part of recovery. Things like hydration, getting your micronutrients in, making sure you're hitting your protein count, all those things, but it opens such a can of worms. This would be the longest video ever. So we're gonna stay focused on the physical actions you can take throughout your day, uh, like elevating your legs, like I'm about to do, the stretching, the rolling, all those things. But if you want more info on the nutrition, check out a previous video I did where I talk about how I lost seven pounds of body fat, three and a half percent total of my body fat. It gives you a very detailed breakdown and it's gonna give you a lot more than what I could do in this video here. The mailman just showed up with a little Christmas letter from Tommy McGuire and Modern McGuire Productions, which is the back-end team who builds all the website and services everything. Without these guys, dude, I, when there's a will, there's a way. I would have found a way. I'm just saying if I didn't have this team, my life would be so much more difficult trying to run dialed health. Like I am beyond grateful for what these guys do. Their knowledge of what they can build has been incredible, but their communication is like bar none. So very trustworthy quality dudes. I mean, doesn't this just, look at this, Merry Christmas. 
from all of us at Modern McGuire Productions to you. Happy New Year. We wish you all the joys of the season and the blessings throughout the coming year. That sounds a little generic, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you for your continued support. The MMPT. You know what? It's, it's handwritten, which I appreciate. <sighs> Might have been a little generic, though. I don't know. What do you think, Tommy? <laughs> He's probably watching this too, so anyways, I'll give him crap for it later. He actually, he still wins because I did not send Dialed Health Christmas letters to anybody, which is, that's like one of those business things where the season comes up so quick, you're so focused on just like running the business, you forget how important those things are, because this honestly means a lot, even though I'm giving him a hard time about the message. So I don't know, when I see stuff like this, it always inspires me as like a business owner because I'm just like, man, like those little things make such a difference when you're building real relationships with partners and customers and, and employees and everything. So shout out to everyone that's got that down because I definitely don't. So before I got to the studio, I was at a coffee shop for literally two hours working on my phone, dove into all my DMs, posted a pretty lengthy Instagram story, and uh, actually saw my mom at the coffee shop and talked to her for like half an hour, which was cool. But now I'm gonna roll because honestly my mid back just feels a little uh, like tight and sore and strained. It's like my mid back though, which happens when I'm hunching a lot, which I was definitely guilty of working on my phone kind of like this in the chair for a while kept catching myself so I'm gonna roll my back and then I'm gonna open up my hips because I've just been in this shortened hip position basically all day at this point and I don't want to be on my feet too much so before I lay down like right over here and elevate I'm just gonna open up my hips I'm gonna roll my back and then I'll be way more comfortable uh, as I actually get more recovery So here's the sequence I do. I have the habit of starting with a glute roll on the foam roller, because uh, I literally start every foam rolling this, this session this way. It can be nice if you have some low back pain to hit your hips and your glutes like this up toward your belt line, but really what I wanna do is hit my, the full length of my back. I wanna do a thoracic extension. We're gonna do windshield wipers for my low back, and then I'm going to actually do a little bit of a hip stretch on the foam roller. So it's a smooth sequence, and I'm gonna show you exactly what that is. So for one, just rolling the back. I like to start with my hands up, but if you actually hug yourself, you'll open up your scapula and help you, it'll help you get behind your shoulder blades a little bit more, which can be gnarly on your upper back. Honestly, it doesn't make a big difference for your mid back. Sometimes even when I go lower there, I'll put my elbows down to kind of help hold myself up so you're not doing like a crunch at the same time. So I'll kind of lean to one side, get my mid back, lean to one side. You're sort of hitting the erectors that go up and down the side of your spine. Now upper back. Once I'm done there, I'm gonna drop my butt on the ground. And I'm kind of just coaching you through this right now because I already just spent some time doing this. And I would normally probably hang out in each zone for a little bit longer. You wanna breathe through it. Really, if you have a full five minutes, that'd be ideal. But from here, I'm gonna put the foam roller directly behind my spine and I'm gonna do a T-spine extension. So foam rollers behind my sternum. Oh, I said directly behind my spine. I meant behind my sternum right here. Like someone just shot an arrow through your chest should be sticking in that roller. Hands behind your ears, you're gonna keep your butt on the ground and you're gonna let your head drop back, open your elbows up, open up wide, come back to the top. And I'll repeat for at least three reps. And you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. The more you fight to get back, the more you're gonna open up. You're gonna even feel your shoulders, it's amazing. So after that, <clears throat> put this down to my low back put my shoulder blades on the ground, it's kind of the opposite. I'm gonna do some windshield wipers. So I'm gonna drop my knees over to the side, roll on the side of my foot, allow that roller to really drive into one side of my back. We're actually getting that QL again, which I talked about earlier when I got off the trainer. I'm gonna go to the other side. 
And what's crazy is this top leg is stretching your TFL and your quad, also similar to that stretch we did after the trainer. So it's a crazy little full circle way to do it. Or just another option for you, if you can hop off the bike and get directly on this thing. Now, last movement I'm gonna do is I'm just going to let one leg reach out. It's gonna start opening up this hip a little bit more. I'm gonna squeeze this glute and bring one leg up, grab the knee, start pulling back, allowing this hip to drive up. Feeling it through my groin and my hamstring on this leg I have raised. Now I'm gonna switch by bringing this leg up first. Some tension in my core to protect my spine. And then I extend the other leg out. It's crazy because when you reach that opposite leg, you're gonna feel that hip open up like crazy. And then typically what I do once this is over is just shoot the roller out to the side, drive, plant my heels and then drive my hips up, tuck my shoulder blades. And now I can get a real stretch through my quads, my hip flexors, and I can get my glutes engaged, my hamstrings engaged. And you can actually kind of rotate and drive one side up to single it out drive the other side up to single it out. And now you've basically counteracted a lot of that time you've spent sitting here. Again, you just did like five minutes versus the two hours or more that you've been in that position. But most people don't even do this and then they complain about hip pain. So don't be one of those people. This actually makes a monster, monster difference. Oh, here's a little extra for you. Roll it on over. Go into upward dog. Same thing, just let, let your hips and your waist drop toward the ground. And you can actually do that rotation that you just did with the glute bridge. And drive one hip toward the ground and squeeze this right butt cheek, drive it. You're really gonna feel that stretch. And that one's cool too when you start rotating because it goes up into your psoas, uh, which is a whole nother ball game. I and mean, that's a whole nother video. Um, and we have videos for it on the website, which major plug, this is like just such a small taste of what you get on the website. So go sign up for a membership at dialedhealth.com. Come on now. Most importantly, go get results. I, I don't want you just to sign up. Go use it. Go get the benefits. Be the best bike rider you can be and uh, probably gonna make you a pretty happy human too. I've officially made it horizontal, the legs elevated. I know you're seeing this glamorous setup right now with the BOSU ball. First off, it took me a long time to figure out how to get this comfortable, <laughs> even in the gym setup I have. I know you're probably thinking, Derek, I could never do that where I work. Like you have it so good. And the truth is, yeah, I do I have it so good. <laughs> I have fought for this people. Um, no, it's crazy. Like sometimes I have to remind myself like, okay, people don't work in the gym. You know, like I don't, people don't have these bars to hang on constantly. Like what's the real life application? And it's crazy because as I've gotten more and more online, I've, I've seen how like there's been a separation um, to where I've been able to like really dial my life in around all this stuff. And other people don't has, have as easy of an opportunity because there's not the flexibility, no pun intended. I mean like with their schedule, with where they're at. Like I get that you can't just walk into work and grab a foam roller and do that. Um, but I also know that if you want to prioritize this, there's gonna be a way. And I don't know how you're gonna have to do it with your situation, but you're gonna be able to find a way. I, prom I promise you, okay? It's not gonna look exactly like this, but you can implement it somehow. Get creative and don't take no for an answer. So if you get 10 minutes to elevate your legs, I'm gonna be here for honestly like 30, but even I've noticed 10 minutes of leg elevation makes a monster difference in how light my legs feel uh, because we all know what heavy legs feel like and you know, cyclists don't want heavy legs. So this makes a monster difference. And then it's cool because I feel more comfortable standing after this, uh, which I also have a standing option desk, which I know is pretty, uh, pretty freaking cool too. But yeah, it also helps you feel like more ready to stand and like you're not fatiguing. So being able to go from sitting, laying, elevating, standing, quick stretching, it's, it's kind of the ideal way to do it.
sick is this bottle? Custom etched in the metal. Okay, I switched positions. I'm still working on my laptop, but now I'm leaning up against the box and I shoved this foam roller behind my low back to make sure that I have some support and my lumbar isn't just flexing and getting all tight uh, because we don't want none of that. Now, I'm gonna get up because my butt's falling asleep. I'm probably gonna work for the next 10, 15 minutes standing and then plop down on a chair like a big fat piece of poopy. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you about what I was gonna use tonight since I actually forgot to bring it with me. It's my Theragun. I'm gonna be using that later tonight and the reason I'm telling you now and not showing you is because once I walk in the door at home with my kids, which by the way, I have a sick kid right now and any parent will know, a sick kid becomes even more work than they already are. <laughs> but, but, but I love them, you feel bad, you wanna take care of them. But there's no chance I'm gonna be able to vlog and show you. But what I will be sneaking in is using that Theragun and just kind of going over my body where I can I'll do it for at least five minutes and it's just another icing on the cake of making your body feel better So if you have any type of percussion gun like that um, There's multiple brands out there that are great. I have no affiliation with their body But you know, I have one of their guns and it works freaking awesome So I would do that and I'd really look into one It can be a little pricey But honestly if you can swing it it is more than worth it because when you're just smoked and tired after a ride or you want to do something lazy that's really productive that is like the ultimate tool for it but that's pretty much it i don't think i'll be hitting the lacrosse ball tonight i have a little massage hook i might throw behind my neck but having all of those tools around and using them frequently throughout the day and just getting in the habit of it it's really going to help improve your riding performance while you're working through your day-to-day -day life and like your real life <laughs> you know it's a it's a hard thing to balance and i know maybe it even sounds like a lot if you don't implement any of this or I don't want you to think that my life revolves around this because it doesn't. Like I'm just fitting this stuff in around my actual life and things that are important and this is really what it's turned into. So pick one thing, implement it daily, make it a habit and then pretty soon all these other things will fall into place. You know, all the other stuff that you also do, hopefully like from your hydration and nutrition that we mentioned to your strength work, all these things you just start implementing those little bit like those little doses until they stick and then you move on to the next thing. Um, I'll tell you guys, last thing right now, I'm starting to get some sleep. My babies are finally starting to sleep and it is one of the best feelings ever. Like getting a consistent seven hours the last week. Uh, there's been two nights where I got like almost eight hours and you just wake up so much happier. I genuinely feel more recovered, more relaxed and kind of just ready to go out of bed opposed to feeling like I need three cups of coffee like I kind of have all year. That's exciting for me. Anyway, so many ways to recover, but I think those routines will really make a big impact for you and that constant movement and just treatment of your body is gonna be what it takes for you to probably get to the next level. So implement it, no excuses, start moving forward.